All right. Welcome to Poetry Discussion with Maria and Kirk. I don't know what to call this yet, but it's just another poetry discussion where right now we are going through some of the poems that Leonard Peikoff went through in um, Poems I Like and Why. Now, hopefully we can do poetry reading a lot more uh, over the long term, but we'll see how things go, how you guys like it. And we can do other poems. We'll get more and more complicated um, and, and more and more challenging. So if you follow along, you should become a poetry master by just a couple of sessions with um, Maria and I. Now, we're going to read a poem. Uh, well, before we read the poem, I want to make sure that they can hear your voice. So, Maria, you have not heard or even heard of this. You've never read this poem. You've never heard this poem. You know anything about the poem that I'm going to share, correct? That is correct. I've never read it. Haven't heard of it either. So I'm, yeah, this is completely new. But let's see how it goes. <laughs> so we're going to rely on you to analyze everything and, and your interpretation matters. Right now. No, but yeah. um, I'll, I'll be there, but I am very interested in your first experiences with it. So I have done a show with another person on ARC UK, Luke Travers. He and I mm -hmm. have done a show called Surprised by Art where he surprises mm -hmm. me with a painting. I surprise him with a poem that he's never heard. Okay. Have you ever, yeah. so if you, it's okay if you haven't listened to that, but um, although you probably should, cause it's a great show, but I did. <laughs> okay. I did. Thank you. So um, <laughs> what, what, so there, it's an interesting, like your first reaction to poetry is really interesting and whether it's right or wrong or to any art, whether it's right or wrong is kind of beside the point. So I, I really want people to get comfortable yourself included, because I mm -hmm. screw up all the time, even after I've read a poem a hundred thousand times, right? Like I still screw, screw up all the time. So I just want you to get comfortable. That's part of it. Just, you know, it's not to say you should settle on a wrong interpretation, but it's, a, it's like your first reactions tend to have clues toward what's really going on. And yeah, so that's my little spiel. Um, any last thoughts before I read this poem to you, which it's pretty famous within objectivist circles, I think, because of peak off. No, let's get into it. Well, let's get into it. I warned you. This is Richard <laughs> Corey. So Richard Corey, Corey, C-O-R-Y, by Edwin Arlington Robinson. I forgot to write down his dates. I think it's late uh, 1800s, uh, I believe. So don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm, we can look it up. Okay, Richard Corey. Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, we people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, clean favored and imperially slim. And he was always quietly arrayed and he was always human when he talked, but still he fluttered pulses when he said, good morning and he glittered when he walked. And he was rich, yes, richer than a king, and admirably schooled in every grace. In fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. So on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread. And Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. Wow. Whew. Very unexpected, I'll be, I'll be honest. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the kind of thing. Now, I don't know if I did a good reading. Hopefully I did a decent reading. But this is a, you know, poetry, as Peacock points out, good poetry should at least have rhythm and that's a kind of meter whenever mm -hmm. richard corey went downtown i think that's the, me the the meter but there's the rhyme here is very powerful right so he sets up you know town crown him slim arrayed said or said i guess that's a weird one but talked walked um what is it king everything grace place light night and then we have bread. So we expect, he's already trained us to expect there has to be something that rhymes with bread. 
end. Mm-hmm. Like we're expecting it. And we just do not expect, given all the things we've gotten that went home. And, you know, so, and so, so let me read the last paragraph again. So on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread. And Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. And it just hits you, right? Like if, yeah. if, if I did it, even a decent job, it should really strike you. Okay. So Maria. Yes. First thoughts on the poem itself overall. Well, anything, first anything. thoughts, just the way that the, the poem kind of surprises us and I guess catches off us, catches us off guard with its ending. I think the first impression here is things are not how they may seem. Mm, um, yeah. So yeah. there is this, this gentleman called Richard Corey. And I love that it, the, the poem is from the we perspective of the people, not from his perspective. I think that makes it really powerful. And there's, I think some, I mean, overarching themes are maybe envy, um, mm. but that translates into, yeah, things just aren't as they seem. And yeah, we're surprised by the ending, as I am assuming the we, the, the people in the poem were probably surprised by what happened to Richard Corey. Yeah, I think you're, you're right on track, right? Like, so there's definitely setting up something between appearances and what's really going on perhaps underneath right yeah we see something going on with this guy but and we think something about him we believe something we have assumptions about him based on all the external trappings that he portrays to the world yeah and yet clearly there's something else going on there's something deeply wrong with this richard cory guy now Whenever Richard, so let's go through the stanza by stanza to kind yeah. of think through it. So let, why don't you read it, the first stanza, to kind of get a feel for it. Sure. Whenever Richard Corey went downtown, we people on the pavement looked at him. He was a gentleman from soul to crown, clean favored and imperially slim. Now just so everybody knows, soul, bottom of the feet soul, not, you know, ghost in your body soul. So S-O-L-E, crown, the crown of your head. So he was a gentleman from you know, toe to, to head, right? Uh, clean favored and imperially slim. So there's a good image of this guy. Like we can yeah. see him walking down a British road, right? In a nice suit, um, you know, maybe 19th century, he's got a nice suit on and maybe a top hat. I don't know if they did that in Britain back then, but yeah. that's the image, I have, right? And, um, and then, you know, we the pe- pe- people on the pavement, you know, so they're on the pavement and they're kind of looking up at him walking by, you know, they don't, I don't know if they say where he is, but he's above them of some sort. That's how I see it. Looked at, or, you know, maybe not above him, but they're watching him from afar. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I kind of thought that they were maybe well, a bit poor, poor people. Um, yeah. Sit, yeah, kind of city dwellers, that juxtaposition between him looking very trim, I'm assuming in a nice suit, you know, he was a gentleman um, and they all stared at him when he visited the downtown area and yeah, yeah. kind of looked up, looked up to him, maybe. Yeah. I guess he was quite a sight, you know. There you to be go. Seen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all have people like that, that we've seen in our lives that maybe even we see regularly, right? Yeah. We see someone that's like, wow, something about that person, you know, and it may just be a superficial looks and i think that's kind of what's going on here right so we've all done that where we see some admirable figure you know for me and it doesn't have to be like a gender thing you know i could see a guy that's like that's a it's a good looking guy right like he's got his stuff together he seems happy successful um you know i wouldn't say imperial like imperially slim that's an interesting statement but that 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 kind of person in our lives so that we've seen on the streets or just out and about as we go out, right? Mm-hmm. Now, what about the next stanza? Yeah. And he was always quietly arrayed and he was always human when he talked, but still he fluttered pulses when, pulses when he said, good morning. 
that he glittered when he walked. <laughs> okay, what do you think that means? He fluttered pulses when he said good morning and he glittered. I mean, do, do you think so he means- pe- people got excited, I think, by hearing mm. him greet them in the mornings and he glittered when he walked. It's almost like there was some kind of like, you know, like aura, like a shining aura about him wherever he went. Um, yeah. But, you know, but but the first two lines, I think they kind of portray him as even though, you know, he was imperially slim, clean favored, wore nice clothes. He was always quietly arrayed. He was always human when he talked. So it's almost like he never felt like he was above anyone. He maybe treated the the maybe the homeless people on the streets, the poor people on the streets with respect and with dignity. So. Yeah. No, I think that's, yeah. that's a hundred percent correct. Like that's how I interpreted personally is there's a, um, you know, like the humanness when he talks is like, he connects with people, but also I think um, he fluttered pulses when he said that when he says, good morning, or like, how are you doing, Richard Corey? He would say, I'm doing great, right? Yeah. I always got that as the impression, you know, he glittered when he walked as, you know, emphasizing that when we see him, he's very happy and confident. Mm-hmm. I, you know, and I mean, Maria, have you ever met someone like that who they seem happy and confident and then you get to know them and you see that they're tragically depressed and sad? Yeah. Absolutely. And if anything, I think because there's a lot of talk about kind of, you know, mental health and what what um, what hides behind the person's interior. I think we've heard so many stories over the past years, even maybe like in in, in show business, like celebrities. This is what mm. I'm kind of thinking here. You know, we look up to them. They look so poised to us, happy. You know, they have what what we would think you know they have everything that you could want um and then we hear of these tragic you know endings to their lives where they commit yeah. suicide robin so williams think, yeah so this is a very yeah very current poem and and whoever richard corey is you know he i think he he exists in, in many people's lives that there is that person um i, I don't so. think there's a real richard corey but like he represents the person. Yeah, you're so he about. represents. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the the wealthy, well mannered, sophisticated man or woman, but uh, yeah, appearances are not as they seem. Hmm. Um. Okay. Next stanza. Yeah, and he was rich. Yes, richer than a king, and admirably schooled in every grace. In fine, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that gotcha, huh? Um, well, yeah, because it just kind of made me think of, you know, who are the people in my life that I mm-hmm. might have met yeah. or maybe not personally met, but kind of look up, look up to, you know, wish that I was in their place. Um, well, if know, I could just we point think- out, though, like your oof is like why you should read poetry and experience art. Like, I love that. I, I just, I'm glad we captured it because it happens to me all the time. You know, you went oof. And it's just like that moment when you connect it to something is just so important. And I, I just wanted to point that out. I'm sorry to interrupt, but keep going. So you meet people like that in your life and everything. And Yeah. yeah so, you know, the, the extremely wealthy, you know, the reference here is Richard and the King, admirably schooled. So, you know, you've got the money, you've got the schooling, the upbringing, you know, you're gracious, um, yeah, sophisticated and basically the people thought that Corey had everything that they could only wish for. You know, we all wanted to be Richard Corey. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and I think that that kind of sets us even more so for what's about to happen in the next. um, next Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, he says in fine, you know, these last two lines in fine, like in conclusion, conclusion, we thought that he was, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. So everything we've, scene from he was a gentleman i think to there is all basically a description of a character of a person that we've all experienced in our lives and so i by the way you've you've emphasized emphasized something that i do want to kind of challenge a little bit 
that Mm -hmm. you've emphasized the people seeing him are really poor. Now, Mm -hmm. I don't, I think they are, and we'll see that there's a little bit of poorness, but I really think it's better personally. I think it's better to see them as just you as the general populace away from Richard Corey, not necessarily impoverished people, but just the, you know, people like yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And even this last stanza, I think will apply to the non poor like us, like I'll I'll explain why in a minute, but um, go ahead and read. Why don't you read the last stanza, please? So on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread. And Richard Corey, one calm summer night, went home and put a bullet through his head. I liked how you sped up when he said to put a, like you wanted to get that part over with. Right? Like, <laughs> I think that's, that's, I, I feel you, right? Like you don't, you don't, you know, and put a bullet through his head. It's, I don't want to, yeah. that's so horrible. Okay, so yeah, so on we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread. So that line, I think, is where it's easy to, like, I think the interpretation is that they're all poor. And I Mm -hmm. think that, I don't think you're wrong, but I would just stress for the experience of the poem that if you kind of, you know, meat and bread is, we're so distanced from this world that it's hard to understand. Like, we're so, you know, getting food is so abundant it's so easy in our world yeah. but if you would just interpret that as you know in your life you've worked you've had times when things were not going well when you weren't when you were barely making ends meet even if you know like i think the majority of people in a culture can feel that way where it's not you're not necessarily literally going without bread and food but metaphorically things are not connecting in your life you're not financially right. going well. Mm-hmm. You don't know where things are going. You know, the, where, where is the light at the end of the tunnel for this thing? It's like, oh my gosh, it's never going to end. I think that's how I kind of interpret it. So that's, for me, like, I think the poem is more powerful if you connect yourself with the person viewing this Richard Corey. Like, you're the person viewing Richard Corey. That's, that's me personally. Mm. But what about you? What are your thoughts? Yeah, okay. well, so when I read, it, when you read it the first time, I kind of thought about like a working class family kind of yeah. maybe living what we will now say paycheck to paycheck um but yeah. then yeah. kind of reading it now I think what's really important about this it, those two lines and so we worked and waited for the light and went without the meat and cursed the bread it's kind of like you know life life continues and you know we did what we had to do um yeah and then it just switches like that image between them working hard for their livelihood and then you know all the while as this was happening and we were sort of living our lives and and kind of fighting for yeah the uh, well went without the meat maybe gave up some um yeah fancy food yeah and and kind of cursed the the card that was dealt to us all while this was happening on a calm summer night Richard Corey put a bullet through his head. It's almost kind of like, how did this happen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's a, it's a definitely a shock to them, to the people who are working and waiting for the light. But, I, you know, I think like, what does Richard Corey represent to this person? You know, we thought that he was everything to make us wish that we were in his place. So these types of people are cursing the meat, right? They're cursing the stuff they have in their lives, right? Mm-hmm. The, what they have. Right. Or, or excuse me, they, they went without the meat. So they went without the yeah. finer things. Yeah. Is one way to think is to like, again, don't take it literally, take it metaphorically. Don't take it as mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. right. So, and went without the finer things in life. And then we mm-hmm. cursed the things we did have, right? The bread. Yeah. Um, as we waited for the light, we waited for someone to save us, to make life better, to, you know, uh, we wish that we were in his place. Yeah. Right. So, and we've all felt that. Right. I'm, I mean, come on. Haven't you ever looked at someone? I'm like, man, I wish I was her or him. Yeah. Like, I just I yeah, want absolutely. her life. Like I want her life. And sometimes you might even think like that might even depress your, like the things you have. I'm like, look at the stuff I have. And I, oh, it's not like what she has. Or look at the, the husband I have. Oh, her husband's way better. Right. Like I wish I had a husband like that. Like we've all had those moments in our lives, I think. Yeah. 
And this poem reminds us, well, there might be other things that they're going on in that thing that you're admiring that's, you know, not as good. That's, that's negative. Um, that's what I see in the poem, personally. Yeah. I don't know what you think about that. I don't disagree. No, I don't okay. disagree. I'm it's just okay sort of like thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, what did I think? Um, yeah. Yeah, and I guess maybe, maybe in some ways, what Richard Corey did to himself kind of shattered their dreams because mm. he was maybe that like, you know, someone to look up to that, well, I don't, I don't want to say beacon of, of hope because I don't know if the people ever anticipated that they would become Richard Corey, but in, in, in any in any case, he was like a breath of fresh air. You know, they all liked seeing him out on the street. You know, he fluttered pulses when he greeted the people. And yeah, it's almost maybe as, maybe those people were hopeful and, and the fact that Richard Corey killed himself is almost, I don't know, maybe like killed, killed that hope of a better life. You know, on we worked and waited for the light, yeah. Well, I mean, what does it say about someone who works and waits for the light, right? Like that waited, we wait, you know, so on we worked and on we waited for the light. Like they're the type of person that, um, and it's not even just type of person. This is an experience we all have, I think, yeah. in some moments of our lives. And I think that's what this is capturing so wonderfully is that experience, mm -hmm. you know, thinking that someone is everything to make us wish we were in their place mm -hmm. and you know there's a moment where it's like why can't someone just sweep me up my feet yeah. and fix all my problems and make the meat you know give me the meat that I want and make the bread taste you know make me appreciate all the stuff I have yeah but, you know so it's like this is so it's like when you're in those moments of that's why I said like try not to think of it as your or that that the character in the viewer of Richard Corey mm -hmm. is uh, uh, just poor people connect it right, with yeah. yourself in this case. Yourself, right. And yeah. that's how I do it anyway, to appreciate this poem. And you can connect it to, you know, like you did with celebrities and there's so many times or Instagram is a perfect example, right? Because You know, you're looking yeah. at Instagram and you're thinking that all the stuff that's, and so you're, you're kind of waiting for this light. You're waiting. I think the waiting is important instead of enjoying the life that you have and building mm -hmm you know, a better life for yourself, excuse me, that you have, mm. you're waiting for it. Like, and that, that, so that means someone's doing it for you. You're not doing it for yourself. Do you think there's also kind of a reference to, so these people thought that they had it bad, you know, they worked, they waited for something good to happen. They had to go out, they had to go without the finer things in life. But it turns out that actually maybe they had it better all along than Richard Corey did because well it makes you think yeah right? that's the point is it makes you like yeah. you know it's like it makes you know, it makes you think maybe maybe something is better about what we have that's that now whether that's true or not is it's hard to say but what it does stress that you stress that you talked about at the very beginning mm -hmm. is this whole issue of we see a very superficial aspect of a stranger's life and Instagram exacerbates this a billion times, right? Absolutely. Like, and, and so we assume things about them and about the joy of their life or that we would have, you know, like, how great would life be if I was there? But you're seeing 10 seconds of a life, of a whole you know, long life of a person, yeah. of another person. And they're very orchestrated at that as well. And they're very orchestrated. Through social media. Yeah. Well, I mean, but like, let's bring it to a real world situation. Suicides are up. And I think it's up among people who have this kind of mentality, right? Who, who yeah. are not just the people who are viewing Richard Corey, but the people who are the, the kind of Richard Corey or trying to be mm -hmm. that kind of Richard Corey. It's like both sides are, you know, because you can imagine the next moment of this is that the people who are looking up to them they give up on life too that's a possibility yeah right this is a true. very um what did peacock call it uh um malevolent universe premise viewpoint i think it's a very yeah. 
malevolent or metaphysically malevolent poem. And it is because neither side are well. And now it's beautifully written and it's, it's a wonderful portrayal of this philosophy. And that's what art does. By the way, is it concretizes these really challenging to understand experiences and, and ideas. Mm. But that, that I think is part of what's going on here is like, it, and I think the Instagram connection is critical that suicides are up. It's both sides. It's people who are the Richard Corys. Like we hear about this girl who was like top of everything, you know, and all of a sudden she killed herself, right? She was the, some Instagram star or the people watching them, right? Who can't handle that they're not getting enough of it, right? Because yeah. they're, they're waiting for the light, right? Literally the light of a camera, you can picture that. They're waiting for that to, to catch them so that they are Richard Corey for a moment. Yeah. But really, Richard Corey is, is an image. It's not real. Right? not real. There's something false behind it. So. I just want to finish off that line where it oh, says, let me, let me. Um, one calm summer night. Uh, I love that that's in the poem because, you know, a calm summer night, you think of something leisurely and, and pleasant. Mm. Um, you know, the, it, it's not like the world is falling apart. It's not yes. like something, nothing oh. apocalyptic is happening. Yeah. And yet that person on this calm, calm summer night, you know, decided to end their life. And this really reminded me, and I'm not going to be able to say which um, novel it's from, but there is a line in a, in a Russian novel or maybe a poem that goes something like, um, what a beautiful day to kill yourself. Mm. So that reminded me of that, that the the tragedy of of the of the suicide is that it happens when you least expect it on a warm calm summer night on a beautiful day mm. you know you don't need the world to fall apart um for someone to do something like that again seemingly everything seems fine and yet you know they decide to end their life <laughs> that was that's very yeah goosebumps i have to say yeah i mean yeah, that line always strikes me as well because it really emphasizes that Richard Corey has deep internal issues that we don't understand because the alternative to that line would be something like he lost his wife and his mother and uh, his son in a car accident and then he killed, right? So, but, yeah. or, so in other words, you know, metaphorically what we would write is something like, and on a turbulent stormy night, went home and put a bullet through his head. That would be the alternative, but that's not what's happening. It's not a stormy night. The external world has yeah. not changed. The external world is great. It's a calm summer night. It's a night that we, you know, like, let's go hang out on a calm summer night and have it, you know, just chill. And this is pleasant. Mm. This is nice. And that's the night that he chooses to put a bullet through his head. And yeah, yeah. so I think it like really stresses the internal that we, you know, that we don't, the struggle that he's going through that we can't fathom. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite line, and I always kind of butcher this, I should know it is from Victor Hugo. There's one thing grander than the sea. That is the sky. There's one thing grander than the sky. That's the interior of the soul. And that's the, the work of great literature is to get into that interior. Now this is not about the interior, but it, it stresses how much there is by no, saying, don't. What's that? Yeah. No, sorry. I just no, said how much there is that we don't, don't know. Um, yeah. And how much there is like, obviously we don't know, but there's that the implication is that there's so much in a person to, to know. Is, yeah. So a lot of the time in poetry, um, the author of the poetry will compare the internal struggle with what's happening in nature. I think there's a term for it. Pathetic fallacy. Um, Maybe kind of when, know. when, yeah. So when, you know, a person is going through this internal struggle and like the nature around him is reflecting that. Mm. Um, Wuthering Heights is a great example. Wuthering Heights. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a great um, example. The, here, the, it's, the, it's, the, here it's the opposite. You know, mm. we're not, we're not um, immersed into the internal world of Richard Corey and everything on the outside seems great. So you yeah. would think that the calm summer night would reflect how Corey, Richard Corey feels inside. But in fact, it's the complete opposite. 
So yeah, and there's a lot of uh, romantic paintings about that where it's like there's a, a small ship at sea and it's like a stormy weather, mm. right? Or there's like the man, uh, what is it called? Man, it's like the famous one that's always used on the books of Nietzsche's work. Um, you know, man on the on a mountain or a cliff overlooking. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. that's not very stormy, but he's kind of, you know, the elements kind of represent his yeah. kind of mastery over the, the universe in a sense. It's, anyway, but yeah, it, there's a lot of that romantic um and Wuthering Heights is a good example where Heathcliff's inner turmoil and, and anger and his yeah. fury at the world is represented by these majestic, I've never been to England, but the, the majestic, or I don't know where, where is it set? Do you remember um, in, in England? Somewhere in England. Well, some, yeah, some some, some, yeah the, the countryside. Countryside with like these stormy weathers. It's, and it's, you know, she describes this intense amount of external world that's always stormy and and intensity is the word that comes to mind. I want to go visit. So England is the place I want to go visit the most because I want to go visit like those kind of cliffs and I want to go visit the Lake district. Um, That's so that's my number one destination. Once the world stops going so crazy. (laughs) We would love to have you here. Well, I don't know how much time I would spend in London. We'll see. Oh, Um, you must. I mean, I'd go to (laughs) London. Of course I'd love to go to London, but. I would definitely want to go to the Lake District. And just it's a beautiful place. Do the walk. So there, he has a poem called An Evening Walk, mm-hmm. um, which was one of his early poems. It's a really interesting, you know, just how he describes everything and his connection to it. It's nice. So I've only been to the Lake District once, but I would love to go again. And if I do go again, I would like to read that poem before I go. Yeah. To pick well, up on those, put myself in that mood and in that framework and pick up on the references. Yeah, if you go again, let me know and I'll give you a couple of his poetry. So like words were like, I'll just end with this. I know I'm, I always go off on words with tangents and I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but Wordsworth, he um, was so famous that people from all over the world would come with like a booklet of his poetry mm-hmm. and go and have like a religious experience yeah. reading his poetry while walking around the Lake District. So, mm. yeah, that's that's what I got. Any last words? about no. Richard, you know, it's a very telling statement <laughs> or phrase about Richard Corey, last words for Corey. Well, yeah, I mean, last words for people who um, put the Richard Corys on a pedestal or maybe want to be like a Richard Corey is, mm-hmm. yeah, impressions are not what they seem and um, be mindful of that, I guess. And if you are a Richard Corey, Ooh, I guess there's a lot to be said there, but <laughs> maybe yeah. for another episode. Life will get better, Richard. Life this will is, get better. <laughs> like, yeah. don't take this philosophy too seriously. Like, it's good to see so that you understand this mm. viewpoint on life. That's why you should read this kind of poetry, I think, not because you should yeah. emulate it. You know. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. And um, so we've, you know, go see The Westerner. This is Richard Corey, and hopefully we'll do some more. Maria and Kurt.